Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. We are wrapping up day one of coverage of DataWorks here in San Jose, California on theCUBE. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, James Kobielis. We have two guests for this last segment of the day. We have Sadir Hasby, who is the Director of Product Management at Google, and Ram Ventakesh, who is VP of Engineering at Hortonworks. Uh, Ram, Sadir, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you My for pleasure. inviting us. Thank you. So I want to start off by asking you about a joint announcement that was made earlier this morning about uh, using some Hortonworks technology de deployed onto Google Cloud. Tell our viewers more. Sure, so basically um, what we announced is support for the Hortonworks data platform and Hortonworks data flow, HTTP and HDF, running on top of the Google Cloud platform. So this, this includes um, deep integration with Google's cloud storage connector layer, as well as it's a, it's a certified distribution of HTTP to run on, on the Google Cloud Platform. I think the key thing is, a lot of our customers have been telling us um, they like the familiar environment of Hortonworks distribution that they've been using on-premises. And as they look at moving to cloud, like in GCP, Google Cloud, mm -hmm. they want a similar familiar environment. So they want a choice to deploy on-premises or go to the cloud, but they want the familiarity of what they have been already using with, uh, with Hortonworks uh, products. So this, this announcement actually helps customers pick and choose like whether they want to run Hortonworks distribution in on-premises, they want to do it in cloud, or they want to build these hybrid solutions where the, the data can reside on-premises, can move to cloud, and build these common hybrid architectures. So, so that's what this does. So HTTP customers can store data in the Google Cloud. They can execute ephemeral workloads analytic workloads, machine learning in the Google Cloud. Yes. And there is some tie-in between um, Hortonworks's um, real-time or low latency yeah. or streaming capabilities uh, from HDFS, HDF no, in the Google Cloud. So you can, just, can you describe at a fairly, at a closer to detail level, the degrees of technical integration between sure. the two yeah. offerings here? You want to take that? Sure, okay. I can do that. So essentially, deep in the heart of HTTP, there is, a, there is the HDFS layer that includes a Hadoop-compatible file system, mm -hmm. which is a pluggable file system layer. So what Google has done is they've provided an implementation of this API for the Google Cloud Storage Connector. So this is the GCS connector. We have taken that connector and we've actually continued to refine it to work with our workloads. Okay. And now Hortonworks is actually bundling, packaging, and making this connector be available as part of HTTP. So bilateral data movement between them, bilateral workload movement? No, think of this as uh, if being very efficient when our workloads are running on top of GCP, when they need to get a data, they can get a data that is in the Google Cloud Storage buckets in a very, very efficient manner. Mm -hmm. So since we have fairly deep expertise on workloads like Apache Hive and Apache Spark, We've actually done work in these workloads to make sure that they can run efficiently, not just on HDFS, mm -hmm. but also in the cloud storage connectors. This is a critical part of making sure that the architecture is actually optimized for the cloud. So at our scale, right, when our customers are moving their workloads from on-premise to the cloud, it's not just functional parity, but they also need sort of the operational and the cost efficiencies that they're looking for when they move to the cloud. So to do that, we need to enable these fundamental disaggregated storage pattern. Mm -hmm. See, on-prem, the big win with Hadoop was we could bring the processing to where the data was. Mm -hmm. In the cloud, we need to make sure that we work well when storage and compute are disaggregated and yes. they're scaled elastically, independent of each other. So this is a fairly fundamental architectural change, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we enable this in a first-class manner. Mm -hmm. so I think that's, that's what this storage yeah. connection I think does. that's a key point, right? I think what cloud allows you to do is scale the storage and compute independently. Yes. And so with storing data in Google Cloud Storage, you can like scale that horizontally and then just leverage that as your, your, your storage layer. And the compute can independently scale by itself. And what this is allowing customers of HDP and HDF is store the data on GCP, on the cloud storage, and then just use the, the scale the compute side of it with HDP and HDF. So if you'll indulge me to name another Hortonworks partner for just for hypothetical, sure. let's say one of your customers yeah. is using IBM Data Science Experience to uh -huh. do TensorFlow modeling 
and training, can they then, inside of GCP, uh, HDP 3.0, on GCP, can they um, use the, the, you know, the compute infrastructure inside of uh, um, GCP to do the actual uh, modeling, which is more compute intensive, and then the separate decoupled storage infrastructure to do the training, which is more you know, storage intensive. Is that a capability that would be available yeah, this is to exactly your customers right. so through this, this is, integration with Google? Yeah, yeah. so what, where we are going with this is we are saying, you know, IBM DSX and other solutions that are built on top of HTTP, they can transparently take advantage of the fact that they have HTTP compute infrastructure to run against. Yeah. So you can run your machine learning training jobs, you can run your scoring jobs, and you can have the same unmodified DSX experience, yeah. whether you're running against an on-premise HTTP environment or an in-cloud HTTP environment. Good. Further, that's sort of the, the benefit for partners and partner solutions. From a customer standpoint, the big value prop here is that customers, they're used to securing and governing their data on-prem in, in a particular way with HTTP, <coughs> with Apache Ranger, Atlas, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So when they move to the cloud, we want this experience to be seamless from a management standpoint, right? So from a data management standpoint, we want all of their learning from a security and governance perspective to, to apply when they're running in Google Cloud as well. Right. So we've had this capability on Azure and on AWS, so with this partnership, we are announcing the same type of deep integration with GCP as well. Mm. So Hortworks is that one pane of glass across all your cloud partners for Precisely. all manner of jobs. And, go ahead, yeah, yeah, Rebecca. Well, I just wanted to ask about, we've, we've talked about the reason, the impetus for this, for the customer, that's more familiar for customers, it offers the seamless yeah. experience, but can you delve a little bit into the business problems that you're solving for customers here? So, a, a lot of times, you know, the customers, uh, our customers are at various points in their cloud journey. Right? For some of them, it's very simple. They're like, you know, there's a, there's a broom coming by and the data center is going away in 12 months and I need to be in the cloud. So this is where there's a wholesale movement of infrastructure from on-premise to the cloud. Others are exploring individual business use cases. So for example, they might, you know, one of our large customers is a travel partner, right? So they are exploring a new pricing model and they want to roll out this pricing model in the cloud. They have on-premise infrastructure, they know they'll have that for a while. They're spinning up new use cases in the cloud, typically for reasons of agility, right? So if you, typically many of our customers, they operate large multi-tenant clusters on-prem. Right? That's nice for sort of very scalable compute for running large jobs, but if you want to run, for example, a new version of Spark, you have to upgrade the entire cluster before you could do that, whereas in this, sort of a, a, a model, what they can say is they can bring up a new workload and that just has the specific versions and dependencies that it needs, independent of all of their other infrastructure. So this gives them agility where they can move as fast Through as the, the business Through the containerization of the Spark Precisely. Uh, uh, jobs or whatever. Correct. Okay. And so containerization as well as even spinning up an entire new environment. Yes. Because in the cloud, given that you have access to elastic compute resources, they can come and go. So your workloads are much more independent of the underlying cluster than they are on-premise. And this is where sort of the core business benefits around agility, speed of deployment, things like that come into play. Mm. And also, if you look at the total cost of ownership, so if you really take an example where um, customers are collecting all this information throughout the month, and at month end you want to do closing of books. And so that's a great example where you want ephemeral workload. So this is like, do it once in a month, finish the books and close the books. That is a great scenario for cloud where you don't have to on-premises create an infrastructure, keep it ready. So that's one example where now in the new, with the new partnership you can collect all the data throughout the uh, on-premises if you want throughout the month, but l move that and leverage cloud to go ahead and uh, scale and, and do this workload and finish the books and all, so that's one. The second example I can give is a lot of customers are collecting, like they run their um, uh, e-commerce platforms and all on-premises, let's say, if they're running it. They can still collect all these events uh, through HDP that may be running on-premises with Kafka. And then what you can do is in cloud, in GCP, you can deploy HDP, HDF, and you can use the HDF from there for real-time stream processing. So collect all these click stream events, use them, make decisions like, hey, which, uh, which products are selling better? Should we go ahead and give how many 
people are looking at that product or how many people have bought it. That kind of aggregation in real time at scale, now you can do in cloud and build these hybrid architectures that are there and enable scenarios where in past to do that kind of stuff, you would have to procure hardware, deploy hardware, all of that, which all goes away. In cloud, you can do that uh, much more flexibly and just use whatever capacity well, you, know, you have. Well, ephemeral workloads, at, ephemeral workloads are at the heart of what many enterprise data scientists do. Real world experiments, ad hoc experiments right. with exactly. certain data sets. You build a TensorFlow model or maybe a model in CAFE or whatever and you deploy it out to a cluster and uh, you, you know, so the, the, the life is, uh, of a data scientist is often nothing but a stream of new tasks that are all ephemeral in their own right, but are part of a long running, or an ongoing experimentation program that's, yep. you know, you're, they're building and testing assets that may be or may not be deployed ultimately into production yep. applications. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, yeah. so I can see a clear need for that exactly. in lots of, well, that capability of this announcement in, in lots yeah. of uh, working data science shops in the business absolutely. world. Yeah. Absolutely, And I think uh, coming down to, if you really look at the partnership, right, there are two or three key areas where it's going to have a huge advantage for our customers. One is analytics at scale at a lower cost, like total cost of ownership, reducing that, running at scale analytics. This is one of the big things. Uh, as, again, as I said, the hybrid scenarios. Most customers, enterprise customers, have huge deployments of infrastructure on-premises, and that's not going to go away. Yeah. Uh, over a period <laughs> of time, leveraging cloud is a priority for a lot of customers, but they will be in this hybrid scenarios, and what this partnership allows them to do is have these um, uh, scenarios that can span across cloud and on-premises infrastructure that they're building and get business value out of, out of all of these. And then finally, we at Google believe that the world will be more and more real-time over a period of time, right? Mm. We already are seeing a lot of these real-time scenarios with IoT events coming in and people making real-time decisions, and this is only going to grow. Yeah. And this partnership also provides the whole uh, yeah. streaming analytics uh, capabilities in cloud at scale for customers to build these hybrid plus also real-time streaming scenarios in uh, with this partnership. We know it's clear for Google what the Hortonworks Works partnership gives you in this competitive space, in the multi-cloud space. It gives you that ability to support hybrid cloud scenarios. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're you're the one of the premier public cloud you know providers that we yeah. all we all know about. And clearly now that you've got the you know, you've had the Hortonworks partnership you have that ability to support those Absolutely. kinds of highly hybridized yeah. deployments for your customers, many of whom I'm sure have those yeah. requirements. Yeah. That's so, perfect, yeah, yeah, exactly right. Well, a great note to end on. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on theCUBE. City of Ram, thank Likewise. you so much. Thank, thank you. you, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, good to have you. I'm Rebecca Knight for James Kobielus. We will have more tomorrow from DataWorks. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Yes. This, this is theCUBE signing off. From sunny San Jose. That's right.